Well, hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so I'm just going to go through um, a few more seeds that, um, that I actually got at the back end of last year, and uh, these are um, these were these were basically bought in the sales. So I think I paid. Um, I think these were sort of like 25 p a packet to be honest with you. I didn't pay much more than that. Uh, but anyway, the first one's um, a brassica, and this is the uh, the Reflex F1 hybrid. Uh, that's the curly kale. Um, now the, um, the curly kale that um, I grew last year was a uh, slightly different, it wasn't an, an F1 hybrid but uh, I'll be having a go at that this year. There's not many seeds in there, um, I think there's 30 seeds so that'll be more than enough for what I want really. Um, but that's that's the first one, so that's by Thompson and Morgan, um, curly kale. Uh, the next one, um, so the one thing I do want to say about curly kale, the one good thing about this is you can grow, because this is quite a small short plant, you can actually grow that between other brassicas, so like the taller, like the um, uh, Petrage kale or the Scottish kale, which kind of grows up here, um, leaves the ground um, sort of quite bare underneath, so if you plant these between the Petrage kale plants, um, you know, you can actually sort of plant, interplant those if you like, so that's, that's, that's worthwhile thinking about. Now, the next one, this is a plant I've not grown before. This is a um, asparagus pea. Um, and this is by, uh, these are by Thompson and Morgan. And these are basically, they grow like a vine, just like peas. Uh, but what you actually get is these sort of little pods that you can eat pretty much like asparagus. Um, I've never tried these before, so what I'll do is I'll grow these this year and I'll, um, I'll let you know um, how these get on. But I'll basically, I'll be sowing these in, um, when do these go in? I think it's early spring. Uh, so, I can't see, but I'm, I'm pretty sure these go in early spring. So I'll be showing these in the next sort of couple of months. So um, I'll be putting some of those in to show you. But that's asparagus peas, I thought I'd give them a go. Uh, the next one, um, strawberries. Now, I've, I've, always, I've always grown my strawberries in the past by, um, you know, sort of multiplying the ones by, you know, where you get the side shoots and then you pot up into pot, plants up into pots and sort of grow them that way. But what I thought I'd do is try these um, um, these tomatoes from seed. Now, I have known people grow tomatoes from seed in the past and what the what typically happens is it takes you um, a year or two to get the plants established before you can really sort of plant them out. But uh, I thought I'd give these a go and these are called uh, um, Florin F1 um, Hybrid. This is from Thompson & Morgan. Um, so I thought I'd give those a go. Uh, uh, the next one's a sweet uh, sweet peppers. Now, I've grown sweet peppers a number of times um, in the past, and um, they're not overly productive in the UK. What you really need, they, we haven't really got the, um, you know, you most certainly need to grow these in a greenhouse and a really nice hot greenhouse. Uh, but um, I've not had masses of amounts of success with um, sweet peppers in the past. But I thought I'd give these a go, and these are called. Um, um, summer salad mix and they're again from Thompson and Morgan so there's only a few of them in there um, so I'm just growing these for fun really but uh, I thought I'd give those a go so I'll be growing those this year and the last two are my um, all-time favorite tomatoes I've been growing um, Alicante now um, for um, oh, a couple of years now um, there's a few people on the channel that advised to grow Alicante now Alicante was actually derived from Moneymaker uh, which is this next packet now, money makers are very old, very old um, breed of um, or variety of tomatoes. Um, it's it's been around for hundred years or more, uh, most certainly in the UK. And uh, you know, this is this is a surefire, surefire variety to grow. If you've never grown tomatoes before, and you want a really good, um, 
cropping tomato uh, that's um, you know that's quite forgiving and will uh, is quite uh, you know it will will grow easily in most conditions. Um, that's money maker, and I know people who grow money maker both inside and outside in the UK. So uh, it is a really versatile variety, which is a, which is probably why it's uh, stayed around um, so long. But money maker is a good flavoured um, tomato, or at least I believe it is. And uh, this is the one that I grow more of anything, um, but, you know, more than other varieties. But that's uh, that that's that's most certainly my staple tomato uh, variety, and I get uh, quite a few kilos off each plant, as you probably saw in, in past videos. Um, so that's money maker, and that's from um, Thompson and Morgan. I'll also be growing um, on this side of the greenhouse behind me here, um, Alicante. Now Alicante is derived from money maker, so they are very similar. Um, variety. Um, some people say Alicante are a better taste. Um, I don't think there's a lot in it to be honest with you. And from a cropping point of view, um, I, I've got to be honest with you, I struggle to find the difference between these two. Um, but um, I thought I'd give them both a go again as I've done in the past. So I'll be growing uh, Money Maker on this side of the greenhouse, which is the largest bed. That's the uh, 10 foot long bed. And then on this side, which is the 6 foot long bed, I'll be growing the um, the Alicante. I normally grow about uh, or oh, 20, 20 odd money maker plants on that side, and then on this side here, I normally have about uh, a dozen or so um, Alicante, and, and I'll be growing another couple. Um, I'll I'll grow some uh, probably um, Gardens Delight, which is the small cherry tomato up at that end, like I did last year. Um, the rainbow um, F1 variety that I grew last year, I don't think I'll bother with that again because that was just, you need far too much room um, for that plant for the amount of fruit that you get off it. Uh, I mean that basically took over that, that far corner of the um, greenhouse and it was you know, quite a massive plant. And when you, can, you know, when you consider that I only really got probably about, um, I don't think I got a kilo of fruit off that, off them two um, at the end. So. Um, you know, from that perspective, and, and the taste wasn't particularly, um, you know, anything to shout about either. So I don't think I'll be growing that again. I, most certainly, uh, um, Gardener's Delight I will because that's a really nice little little baby tomato to grow in, um, uh, you know, for salads and things like that. But I will be growing a fourth variety of tomato as well. Not quite sure which one yet. I've, I've, I've yet to decide. I've got a few that I may or possibly grow. But anyway, those are a few more seeds that I've picked up last year that I'll be growing this year. So these will be um, coming up in the next um, few months. I'll be I'll be planting these and um, showing you how to grow them. Okay, so I want to go through um, a few more seeds that I've purchased over the past few months. And um, these ones actually came from Wilco, uh, which is always a really good place to get your seed. And um, I don't know how much time I've got, so what I'll do, I'll probably go through half of these and I'll, I'll put another clip out with the rest of them, but uh, let's just about pick half and then you'll see what I've got. So, these, as I say, these came from Wilco's um, and they're all pretty much their own brand. So, um, the first ones, which are quite apt really for today, um, are the gourds. Now, um, I've, oh, let's put them there. Uh, the first ones are um, cores yet. Now, this is. Um, Gold Rush F1, uh, and I typically always get F1 hybrid um, courgettes. Uh, these are the ones I got last year. Um, so last year I got these ones from um, that's um, uh, I can't remember the make of those Country Value. Um, so I got Gold in here last year. There's no reason why to say those seeds won't be okay, but as these were on offer, um, I got the uh, these from um, Wilco's, as I say, and these are from. Um, Johnson's and um, this is Gold Rush F1 so that's the core jet so I'm going to be going this year. Um, from a pumpkin point of view exactly the same type as I had last year again these were from Country Value and this was um, sorry that's the button to flash um, these are the uh, the pumpkins so Big Max was the pumpkins I grew last year and um, I'm going to grow exactly the same ones but these come from Wilco so it's exactly the same variety um, and these were £1.50 can't go wrong really so those are the those are the gourd seeds. Um, there will be others gourds, but uh, those are the ones from Wilco's. Um, what I've done is I've also got some more um, spinach. Uh, spinach. I've actually got a couple of packets of this. 
because I'm going to go I'm going to go all out this year. I'm going to grow a lot of spinach because I do like spinach. And last year the crop wasn't brilliant to be honest with you compared to other years. So what I'm going to do is grow twice as many rows. The tunnel at the bottom won't be moving, um, and I grew brassicas in there this year, or at least this side of it. So all of this side is going to be spinach basically. So most of the the majority of that tunnel will be full of spinach. So um, I've got another two packets of this, and this is perennial spinach, um, which is, um, is is actually a chard, as I explained. But this is um, this is really robust against um, you know sort of um, if it gets dry, it doesn't bolt basically. So uh, you know typical normal spinach, if it gets dry, it will bolt, it will run to seed, and then that's it, it's done. But with this, it's a lot more um, sort of forgiving. But it is actually a chard rather than a spinach. But um, anyway, one pound fifty a packet, so they were good value from um, from um, from Wilco. Uh, now, uh, broccoli. So this is the um, Calabrese. Again, one pound. You can't go wrong, really. But uh, that's the uh, that's the other one. I've shown you a packet already that I'm going to be growing. This is a different variety. This is um, autumn. Um, green calabrese but what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually plant this because uh, it takes typically 12 weeks so what I'll actually do is plant this late spring so it'll be really early autumn it'll be basically summer but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be growing that. Um, lettuce, um, little gem so this is this is very similar to um, like an iceberg type lettuce and these are good for growing in between your, your larger brassicas like your kale and stuff like that um, but I'll be putting those in so they're a little gem and they can be planted basically from March, so I'll be putting some of those in. What you can do with lettuce is you can grow it in your greenhouse as well, so you know, as your tomato plants are growing, you can plant lettuce between them um, and uh, you know, to get an early crop in the greenhouse. And then later on when you plant your brassicas outside, um, plant your lettuces between them as well. So you know, you can, basically lettuces are a free um, um, sort of vegetable really, because you, you know, they don't really take it real because you plant them amongst other things. Um, next one, um, peppers, these are hot jalapenos, um, it's actually a different variety than I grew last year but um, I've got the other plants here, hopefully they're going to um, sort of come back to life um, this spring, not quite sure because I've kept them in the greenhouse but uh, anyway these are hot jalapeno peppers um, and it's a pound again you can't go wrong. Um, okay, uh, parsnips, another variety, I've already shown you two or three varieties I think last time. Um, this is another one called Student. I've not grown these before, uh, but I thought I'd give these a go. But they were 25p, so nothing to nothing to lose really. I mean, the 400 seeds for 25p, you can't go wrong. But they're um, I've not, as I say, I've not grown them before. These are long, thin parsnips. So um, that's another. That's one of the four varieties I'll be growing this year. Spring onions. Um, these are always good because you you can plant a short row of these somewhere. A little bit of spare ground you've got. And these are always nice for salads and well most things really. Um, so that's white Lisbon spring onions, and that's from the Wilco's range of seeds again. And um, sweet peas. Now I've actually got two different types of sweet peas. Uh, are they the same? Yes, they are the same. I've got two packets. You don't get many seeds in the packet, so I've got two packets. Um, there's 35 seeds in there, so I want quite a few. So um, I've, I've got 70 seeds there, all being well. So that's uh, a mix called Royal Mix. And at 50p a packet, again, you can't go wrong. Um, and I'll be planting these up the side of the um, up the side of the um, tunnel again. So, but these are just really nice to have in the garden. I think you know, and uh, you know, as you're walking through, they smell really nice. They look really nice, and uh, you know, any flower is going to attract insects and stuff. So, anyway, those are the, uh, the sweet peas. Okay, so another um, bunch of seeds that I've bought this year. Now these are these are also from um, from Wilco's, um, like the ones I've shown you. But uh, the first one is um, Swede. Um, now these come from, um, so this is called Best of All. Now I've actually grown this same variety last year. Um, so at, um, at 75p again, really you can't go wrong. So they're from, as I say, from Wilco's. Uh, beetroot, um, I've got two or three varieties of beetroot um, that I'm going to put in. But these are um, Detroit 2. And uh, again at 50p, uh, you know, that's, that, that's a really good... Um, variety to grow. Now what I typically do with beetroot, in exactly the same way as parsley, what I typically do is plant two or three varieties up the same row in, in the same position 
and then see whatever comes, whatever grows well, you know, I'll, you know, then I'll, I'll sort of pluck out the ones between and do carry on. So I'm, I can't have edge my bets. And for 50p, really, you can't go wrong. So that's, that's one of the beetroot varieties I'll be doing this year. Uh, moving on to turnips, um, which is, um, again, a brassica. Um, the turnips, I've got two different types here. First one is Purple Top Milan. And you can see that. Um, that's one pound a packet, and there's quite a few seeds in there as well, if I remember correctly. A thousand seeds. So, uh, can't go wrong, really. So, that's the first one. Um, and the second one is called Snowball, which is a white turnip. Um, and that's um, again you've got quite a few seeds in there, there's 1,500 seeds in there for a pound so uh, I'll be growing those two, I will be growing those in two different rows so I'll grow, probably grow a row of those and a row of those um, in the uh, the ground this year uh, which are always good for um, sort of um, you know stews and stuff like that but the, the one thing about turnips that I always find is people always leave them in the ground too long, what you need to do with turnips is um, pick them or, or, or get them out of the ground when they're reasonably small. You only want them to be sort of, I don't know, two or three inches across, any bigger than that, they just go tough. So, uh, you know, you're much better off growing lots of little ones and, uh, you know, you can very easily um, grow a succession of these as well. So, you know, put a put a row in and then, uh, or half a row, depends on how much you need, and then leave it a month and then put another row in because you can sow these for five months of the year. So, you know, you can, you know, you, you can quite easily get a succession and uh, you know, so you've always got a you know some fresh ones coming on. Um, another parsnip um, variety. Now this is white gem. Uh, I've grown this many, many, many times. Um, this is always a, a really good one to grow, and, the, and these grow really nice. This is a this is a longer, um, thinner variety, but uh, they always grow well in my soil. And uh, it's a pound. You can't go wrong really. I mean, there's uh, there's 300 seeds in there, so it's really good value again. And finally, last but least, is um, a tomato that I grow every year, and this is um, this is Gardener's Delight. Um, now, what I always do is, over the past few years most certainly, um, for the last, I don't know how many years, I've always grown Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight because they're the two, you know, sort of staple. Uh, you know, these are really good. I only typically grow two plants of this uh, because they're nice little cherry tomatoes that you can have with salads and stuff. And then typically the rest of the, the, uh, the greenhouse is full of um, either uh, Moneymaker or Alicante, uh, which are pretty much the same variety as I explained last time. But uh, So I bought those and at 75p, again, you can't really go wrong. Okay, so um, also I've bought some um, some other bits and bobs from uh, from Wilco's in the past couple of weeks. And what I have done is I've bought the, uh, the onions. Now, um, they've got three or four, five different varieties in, in these big bags, they've got some of the smaller bags as well. Uh, but what I always grow is um, these are um, Stuttgart, uh, which I grew about three years ago, which did reasonably well. The only problem that you find with them is some of them go flat bottoms, where you want an onion to be reasonably nice, nicely shaped, you know, like a um, more round than anything. And what you can find with those, rather than it being kind of that shape as it shows on the label. What they can do is go kind of flat at the bottom, I found, with that particular variety. Um, another variety I've got um, um, is sturgeon. Now these typically are longer longer um, onions, uh, these sort of longer, thinner, rather than shorter and fatter. But that's another variety that I've got, sturgeon. And last but not least, from the white onion range at least, is um, um, is turbo. Now I've grown turbo um, for, for many years and it's always a, um, a really good um, sort of st staple um, variety. Now I have gone for three varieties this year. The reason being is last year, um, as you know, I had that um, onion blight which we had to cross and what I've done is I've, I've deliberately gone for three varieties this year to edge my bets. Now there's no reason for me to think that one of these is any less susceptible than the others. But um, as I say, I've got some different varieties this year rather than because last year I only grew turbo and had that problem. Even though I got some good onions out, they were only small, you know, they, they got struck off quite quite early on in the season, so they didn't form properly. Um, but as I say, I've got these three varieties this year and I'll see how they go. They're the white onions. I'm also going to grow this year some red onions. And this variety is um, this red variety is, um, I just call red onions, onion sets red onions, so they're quite inventive with that name. Um, I think I've got two bags of those, 
because um, you actually get less in these. You get, uh, I think there's 500, 250 grams in these, and you get 500 grams in there. So I've, basically what I'm going to have is effectively a quarter of the onions I make this year, or grow this year, are going to be... Um, are going to be, uh, yeah, they're just red onions again. Um, they're going to be red and the rest are going to be white. Now, the best tips I can give you when you're looking for the onion sets, because um, what you can get with onion sets is you can get a tendency for the onion to, to run to seed, to bolt. What you want is a, is a nicely shaped um, onion set that's not too big. Don't be tempted to get bags of onion sets with really big um, sets because if they're quite big, they're likely to bolt, either they're likely to run to seed. Um, so what you want is something no no bigger than that, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but you want, that's that's kind of, I don't know, I'd say about uh, half an inch to, sort of, most certainly no more than, um, no more than, I'd say, um, five-eighths of an inch across, sort of, I don't know, sixteen. 16 mil across. You don't want anything bigger than that, because uh, what they can do is, you know, if if they are bigger, um, they they can have a tendency of running to seed on you. Um, also, what you want to have a look at is is look through the bag when you you know when you're selecting your bag, and the earlier you get to the shops to buy them, the better, because you're going to have the best pick of the best pick of what's in the shop. Um, you want to look at the, the the little root at the bottom and make sure you've got no sort of fungus or anything on there. And also what you want to do is just give them a little teeny gentle squeeze and see if they're hard or if they're soft. If they're soft, that means they've not been kept particularly well and they could have frost damage or something like that. What this should be is, as I say, about 16mm or so across, about 5 eighths of an inch. They should be reasonably firm uh, you know, when you squeeze them. And just look at the root end and what you should see is nice little dry roots as opposed to any kind of white or grey fungus on there. Um, and then you should be okay. So that's that's what I always look out for when I'm getting my um, onion sets, just to make sure that the, the sets aren't too big. Um, and I think for sort of beginner gardeners, you know, they might be tempted to put in all the bigger sets, you know, the bigger the better. In fact, what you will find is, um, and, I've, and I've, I've done an experiment in the past, um, a small set doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a small onion at the end of it. Um, I, I quite often find that the, the small sets actually make nice onions at the end. The bigger sets aren't necessarily the biggest ones at the end, and they're more likely to bolt. So, some of the onions in here. This is the um, the the, the stirring uh, variety. Some of these are a little bit big. So that one there is bordering on too big. I mean that's that's reasonably big. Oh, I'll still put it in the ground, but that could possibly bolt. Um, that one there next to it is a little bit big. Um, now, if you if you grow your onions from seed, which you can do in one season, you can grow them from seed. Um, you know, you can get some really nice big onions, and they're less likely to bolt. But I've always grown mine from sets uh, because I just find it easier to to grow them, and it means I don't have to have anything in the greenhouse. Because um, when typically when you start putting the onions in with the leeks and stuff like that, what you typically find is you're starting to run out of room inside the greenhouse. And even though I've got a nice big greenhouse, you you know. You, you know, you still kind of run out of room. So I find that sets means that there's, there's there's nothing in the greenhouse that you know that needs to be done. I can just dig the ground, rotate it over, and then bob them straight in. There's there's you know there's no need for that. So it's less hassle to do them. And to be honest with you, you know, I've always grown my onions from sets, and I have very few of them that have that have run to seed or bolted. And typically, when they have, it's because I've not watered them, as opposed to them anything you know anything to do with actual sets. So. Um, so yeah, those are the onions. What I have done is something very unusual, and I've 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 actually been out and bought some potato sets, uh, some seed potatoes. Now I haven't bought any seed potatoes now for at least a decade. I I just keep planting the same potatoes I had the last year. So that well, I I always grow kestrel, and uh, I always save the the smaller potatoes for the following year and I just plant the same potatoes back in the ground. But what I've done this year um, is I've I've chanced my arm and I've bought some Maris Parker because I do like Maris Parker potatoes. And um, as they were as they were only um, I think they were two pounds seventy five for this nice big bag of them. I thought well I can't go wrong really. So I'm gonna have a go at growing some Maris Piper. The last time the last time I grew Maris Piper in this allotment um, I had quite a disastrous year. 
um, and I had a lot of slug damage and I had a lot of um, a lot of the potatoes were just basically ruined because of slug damage and the reason I grow kestrel is kestrel is less susceptible to slug damage and you know I've never really had much problem since so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow probably about two possibly three rows of Murray's Piper there um, and what I'll do is I'll dig them up first so before I start digging the kestrel up I'll dig the Murray's Piper up um, so they're in the ground less so they're less likely to get slug damage so I will be planting some Murray's Piper this year obviously I'll, I'll still grow the, the kestrel I'll probably have about um, eight or nine rows of kestrel in the ground and I'll have two or three rows of Murray's Piper this year um, I also may take up marks off it and I might grow some in buckets in the greenhouse as well this year just to get an early crop so um, so I'm um, planning to grow some potatoes in the in the, in the greenhouse as well um, or in one of the two greenhouses I'm not quite sure yet so that's the the onions and the potatoes for this year so I hope this episode has been of some use to you please don't hesitate to put any comments you've got below and I'll always get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lot of Garden.